Coming up on today's episode, Bargain HDTV Recos, how to clean your screen without screwing it up, and the Blu-ray releases for the week of August 4th. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Gamefly, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air. If it's HD, we likes it. And if it's Battlestar Galactica, the complete series, I'm in love with it. This is not my version. This one's still boxed up. We're going to have a little unboxing for you today on the show to show you just how out of control packaging can get. And to be frank with you, by the time you're watching this, I will probably be watching the entire 21 disc set for the second time because I've given up sleep. Wow. <laughs> so that's what I'm watching this week. What are you watching? <laughs> let's see. Let's see. I have to say one show that I've been checking out lately in HD, of course, would be World's Toughest Fixes. <gasps> it's, it's on amazing. the uh, Nat Geo channel, National Discover, uh, yeah, National Geographic's channel. And a guy named uh, Sean Riley is a rigger by trade. And it's basically you're going along with this guy on his various quests. And sh basically he goes around to some of the largest, most impressive fix-it jobs in the world. Yeah, it's, it's not quests, it's not adventure, it's his gig, it's what yeah. he does. He wakes up in the morning, and then he climbs up a 2,000 foot aerial and moves around. That what, episode. Was like a 10 ton block of equipment, 2,000 feet in the 2, air? 2,000 feet on a, on a TV tower antenna, or an antenna on a, on a tower that's 2,000 feet tall. I, I just have to say, it, it was beautifully done. It's risky as heck, some of the things he does. Right. And it, it, it's fun, it's just fun HD to watch. And it's, a, again, a little bit of reality TV, but very cool stuff. He's always on unique projects. I think they have one of the hate, the Large Hadron Collider coming up where he's actually going to uh, Switzerland to put his put his fix on that as well. I like that, that thought. Anything up. else you obsessed with this week? There's another show, actually, uh, Pawn Stars, which is another one. It's, a, it's about a family that runs a pawn shop in Vegas, and that's all I'm going to say. It's, it's like Miami Inc., but with a pawn shop. It is awesome. I just, I just have to say, I'm only like three episodes in. I think there's only, it is only three episodes so far, but that, so, it's so on my DVR, on my, on my season pass list. Does a pawn shop actually do justice to like a 1080p frame? I, I, I mean, is it like, like, look, you can see the frets and all the guitars for sale it, behind the it, angry father's head? It's shot head. in HD. I'm a, being the <laughs> HD snob, I guess I am. <laughs> it is in HD. It's shot really well. But, now, you know, it's, it's more about, I'd say, the characters right. and, and the content than it is the absolute resolution of the picture. So That makes sense. Good stuff. For some amazing HD, I've forgotten one other thing I recorded, and I'm basically using it to, to make Serafina work late nights. It's on HD Theater, it's the Isle of Man TT, and it is unbelievably beautiful if you're into motorcycle racing. Actually, you'll probably want to see this one I too. don't get HD net. I oh. subscribe to cable, and that just makes me angry because I don't see Deadline anymore with Katie Darrell. Yummy. I'm Yummy. I'm sorry. I do. I miss Katie. He Katie, Katie, if you're out there, email me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to get our HD news on. All righty. I'll, I'll unbox? Yes, yes. Okay. I, I've made... Patrick Norton, Mr. Norton, they promised to never talk about Battlestar Galactica, the complete series again. And he'll be unboxing a stunt copy of the massive box set while I read the news. <laughs> that stunt copy. Yeah, sure. So, <laughs> LG Electronics isn't stopping with Netflix. No, nope. they're going to bring Voodoo, Voodoo HD, streaming to a uh, broadband enabled HD TVs. Actually, LG's LH50 1080p LCD series and the PS80 Plasma, it's also a 1080p series plasma television, with the Netcast Entertainment Access, will be the first to incorporate the new service that you should see in TVs later this month. Now, Voodoo's excellent streaming. Uh, basically, it's 1080p video, and they use something called HDX, that's their you know, version of encoding technology, to stream these movies that normally require a standalone box from Voodoo. Now, they do require a fairly healthy broadband connection, but you're given a ton of HD content to choose from, with over 1,700 titles for rental or ownership on an a la carte basis, meaning you don't have to pay a monthly fee, you just buy what you want. In cable land, Comcast is the first to launch HBO Video On Demand in HD. HBO is the last premium U.S. provider to deliver video on demand in high definition. 
Apparently, there's still a large market for people that can't figure out how to set the DVR to record True Blood, Entourage. Well, it's it's actually, it's it's. I, I was kind of like, you know, well, this is ridiculous, right? They haven't done video on demand. Why would they start now? Actually, we understand it's, it's going to be like season one, previous series of Entourage, the entire Sopranos, The Wire, and a ton of movies are going to be available on the service all in HD, which is kind of cool because a lot of those movies are HD exclusive depending or, or on cable or satellite may be exclusive to HBO. So Nice. Hey, you know what? If you're into video on demand, there are more options. Are you, uh, are you done with your box set, the I unboxing of the box set? I will never be done with the precious. We'll be talking bargain HCTVs later on in the show and showing you how to clean your HCTV without tearing it up. Up next, though, comes our Blu-ray picks for the week. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Gamefly People, the largest online video game rental service. They offer a choice of over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Rather than, say, getting stuffed for 50 bucks buying a game that turns out to be not so good, you can pay 16 bucks a month and actually rent one to four games at a time. Keep them for as long as you like. You like them, keep them. You don't like them, send them back. There's no late fees, there's no due dates. The shipping is always free. And once you're done, send it back. Gamefly sends you the next available game on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, click keep it on the Gamefly website. The game is yours at a discounted price. We like discounts. Matter of fact, Gamefly's even gonna mail you the case and the manuals free of charge so you have something other than the lonely disc you've been playing with. As an HD Nation fan, you can score a two-week free trial. Just go to Gamefly.com slash HD Nation. Some restrictions do apply. Please see the site for details. And do us a favor. Support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors, like Gamefly. Let's talk about the Blu-ray releases for August 4th, 2009. Patrick, Roger, and I did the happy dance when we saw Big Trouble in Little China on the list. It also pains us to say that nobody seems to know how well the John Carpenter cult classic has been transferred to Blu-ray. We do know that it is 1080p resolution, encoded using AVC MPEG-4. Also, it's going to be a 235 to 1 aspect ratio, and it offers DTS HD lossless master audio 5.1 surround track, and it features an extended cut version with never before seen footage along with the nine deleted scenes and alternate ending from the DVD. Now, the BD50 disc gives this movie plenty of room to breathe, so let's hope it's from a better source than that early DVD was. It's been, it's kind of really frustrating. A lot of movies from the 80s, nobody knows where maybe the original negatives are. They're working from prints, so we're hoping. Yeah. We haven't been able to get our paws on that one, but we're looking forward to seeing it unbox. Another happy dance inducing title, The Last Starfighter, the 25th anniversary edition. This is one of the very first feature films to use a ton of CG, computer generated animation. And given that it basically was about a lonely nerd who was obsessed with a video game being carted off into space to oh, save a planet, and he ends up with a really cool girl in the end, you can see why all of us, and pretty much everyone who played video games our age, really liked it. Death Blossom! I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Look, right? <laughs> The HDDV version, HDDVD version was out. Nobody I know, and a lot of us were out there hunting for HDDVDs, has actually seen that. It was a mediocre transfer, barely better than watching an upscale DVD. I found that out from people who did see it. The original film wasn't exactly high budget, so, well, like a lot of low budget films out there, that means cheap film stock, which means not the best images to work with. And it's got early blue screen effects. They tend to get noticeable when they get scaled up to 1080p. And like many 80s films, without doing a ton of serious audio editing, most of the DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack will be stereo, because that's pretty much what they did, right? Yeah. So Universal isn't making any noise about this being a new transfer. We can only hope that they're being very quiet but about having taken the time to maybe find a negative and make this. 1080p Blu-ray version look prettier, but eh. it makes me wonder for a lot of movies how they were stored or how they're being stored. But uh, we can cross our fingers and hope for the best. Now, other Blu-ray releases this week include Billy Bob Thornton's Tour de Force, Sling Blade in 1080p AVC transfer that isn't spectacularly detailed, but it looks true to color. Along with Race to Witch Mountain, Chaos, Labor Pains, Man on the Moon with Walter Cronkite, My Cousin Vinny. Oh. Mutant Chronicles, <laughs> Obsessed, and The Soloist. We should also point out that uh, Adam Sandler's it's classic, The Water Boy, was pushed from its <laughs> original release date and actually isn't coming out last week, but is coming out August 4th. Coming up next, all right, we're going to talk about how to clean your HDTV screen without messing it up. And we're going to get, well, pretty serious about finding bargain televisions and whether or not you should trust the house brand. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. If you're looking for a place to find a great selection of Blu-ray discs, look no further than our next sponsor, Netflix. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including a ton of Blu-ray titles with free shipping both ways to and from your home. 
They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in a single business day. Plans start at $4.99. Blu-ray plans start at just a little bit more, and as a new member, you can get a no-risk, two-week free trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash HDNation, and remember to type the www when using this code. Please, support HD Nation by supporting our sponsors like Netflix. Clear screen wipes are great, so are $200 Blue Goo rollers originally designed for high dollar print shops like Mr. Heron has lurking in his workshop. But what do you really need to clean your screen? And why should you care? Well, let's talk about this. If you make a big enough mistake when you clean, you'll probably need a new HDTV since repair costs tend to be epic. It's usually actually cheaper to buy an entire new television than to buy replacement parts if you damage them. Usually is. Yeah. Should we talk about things to avoid first? I think so. <laughs> what, what's the first thing you would avoid? Don't haul out a clan of, of window cleaner and start spraying the monitor. Ammonia-based products might strip the coatings off the flat panel, and oh yeah, if you're really lucky, the drips and drops might get inside the monitor and do something really ugly. Like it had actually stained the plastic on the screen one really? time and it left it permanent marks. I mean, uh, blue, marks. green, yellow, orange. They were a weird purplish. It was it was really bad. Now it's just and if, and once you see it, you know you did it. You will always see that forever on that screen. I mean, maybe your friends won't notice right away, but you will. You really will. In the, my household, because we have a toddler, baby wipes are the universal solution <laughs> to cleaning anything. Do not put baby wipes on your television, especially the kind that include aloe or lotions <laughs> to soothe your baby's ass. Did you really wipe your screen with one of those? Someone else in my family, okay, uh, not my wife, not my son, grabbed a baby wipe. And what's really interesting is they leave this amazing film on the screen, this beautiful white streak, especially if the HDTV is hot, because hot HDTVs pretty much vaporize the water before you, you can run over and whip the baby wipe out of someone's hand and put <laughs> something clean on the screen. That almost makes me want to cry. Now, in theory, you should avoid paper towels. Have you ever seen one actually scratch a screen? Oh, yeah. Really? Oh, yes. Especially if you've got a small mark and you're trying to, you're putting enough pressure with your finger, rubbing in a circle, which is the other thing I really avoid trying to do with screens. It's sandpaper and you will put a mark on there that's permanent. You will not get that off. That would be bad. You really avoid that. Apparently, I've been lucky with my occasional paper towel usage. I mean, no oh boy. No uh, paper towels. Yeah, you should also avoid cloths with lots of lint. This is part of a 60 pack I picked up at Costco, which is great for cleaning like aluminum trailers when you're doing a lot of polishing, but will leave thousands of wee little dots of fluff on your screen that you will spend most of the rest of your natural life getting off of there. Totally. So, should we talk totally. about what you should actually use? The best thing on the planet for clean cleaning your screen is a microfiber cloth. Notice how I keep my dust free, sealed. I like that. Yeah, well, you I'm, know what? That's a really good idea because just I, I have a habit of just throwing them into the drawer with all the other junk I have in my kitchen, and they do. They'll collect every little bit of crust and goo and everything in the in the drawer. So. If you can wash them separately and dry them separately, because they're really funny to see one of these if it's been in like with the right kind of towel or cotton shirt or sweater, and you have a microfiber cloth with a thousand little tiny bits of fluff on it. It's really annoying. One mistake somebody or one thing I did that I learned not to do, and I had several people point it out to me, was when you're washing these in the wash machine, it's great, but avoid fabric softeners, especially either the kind you add into the wash cycle or the dryer sheets. They add a basically a coating to these claws, and that too will also leave streaks and gunk on your screen when you're trying to clean it. It effectively ruins them. However, if you rewash them without the, the uh, softener agents, it usually will recover this, the microfiber cloth for you. So yeah. that's one thing to keep in mind. One of the things you want is, uh, you know, so if I squeeze, if you squeeze your microfiber cloth, if it's dusty, dry microfiber. If there's a lot of dust on it, you can get it wet, or if there's like some fingerprint goo on there, uh, a little bit of water can help. If it's dripping when you wring it, it's too wet. Oh yeah. Don't put it on the screen. It, distilled water too is arguably the best thing you can use because then it doesn't contain any of the minerals you might get from either tap water or even filtered water for that matter. So it's sometimes a pain to keep a, a jug of that laying around specifically for this cause, but I think it's worth it, especially if you plan on doing it on a regular basis. Just get yourself a, a supply of your distilled water and that way uh, you know it's 100% pure. Yeah. And it also works great in irons. So you can pick these up in <laughs> single packs Good from point. 3M at office and computer stores, places like Costco or, or big box construction stores and auto parts shops sell them in bulk bags and make them super cheap. Either one works, the, the Cool Guy 3M ones or the No Brand ones. Just again, keep them, just don't wash them with anything that generates a lot of lint and again, don't wash them with fabric no, Totally. And another great use, I mean, I'll have these laying around and I, the big, another prime 
common use I use for microfiber cloths is discs. CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray discs, I wipe off everything before I put it into the tray, especially rental discs. I find that you got about a 50-50 shot of whoever had that disc before you left it face down on a coffee table or worse, face up for weeks on end and it just collected a nice film of grit and grime and it's good to Did remove you that. one that smells like beer? I, not yet. I, had, I, had, I won't say what I thought I smelled on it, but if the other thing too is, especially with Blu-ray playback, it's important to make sure that disc is clean because right. of it might skip or not play at all in most players. So. Little tiny dots in the surface of the I'm aluminum substrate that reflect <laughs> the laser are easy to throw off. Sure so, are. You got some heavy peanut butter covered toddler mess on your monitor. Not that I have any experience with this. Try a 50% solution of isopropyl alcohol uh, and distilled water. And with your microfiber cloth. Whatever you do, for God's sakes, don't drink this. Uh, <laughs> no. They sell it for like $42 a bottle uh, under the name of uh, alcohol electronics cleaner uh, or alcohol-based electronics cleaner at the various and sundry electronics shops. It's rubbing alcohol from your local drugstore. If you get the 60%, yeah. it's pre-mixed for you. Throw a little bit of extra water in there. Uh, if it's 91%, mix it down like 40% water. And again, get it wet and don't use the scented kind. You don't want the... Uh, it, that would be really bad to have like the winter green stuff permanently embedded you in your monitor. You want to keep it simple. Just alcohol and water. Yeah. Mix 50-50 like you said. That's a great mix. If you have unfortunate goo on your screen, that's, if I have to give one primary lesson I teach everyone is never put your fingers on a screen, especially someone else's TV. Teach the kids not to do that either. Get them out of the habit of running up and just... One last tip. Make sure your monitor is off and well cooled down before you start cleaning it. Your moisture rag will go a lot farther, and if you do something horrible, like use some sort of non, uh, if you use a cleaner you shouldn't use, it's much less likely to dry and become a permanent part of the surface totally. of the monitor. Make sure the thing is nice and cool. I got one tip too, to keep dust off the surface of the screen, the screen surface, if you're mounting it or if you have any way of doing it, tilt the screen forward slightly, just slightly, so that as gravity is pulling dust down, it will hopefully miss most of the screen. You're still gonna get dust along the top edge and probably dust on the base, but it keeps a majority of it off the screen surface, and it's something really simple. You can either, you know, put a little shim behind the TV, or if it's wall mounted, hopefully you get a tilt out function. That would be nice. It really is. <laughs> it sure is. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. When we come back, though, we're gonna be talking, he's gonna be talking, HDTV bargain monitors, and why you might not wanna shy away from the house brands at your local big box store. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy. Get reliable, secure web hosting without a long-term contract. GoDaddy's hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99% uptime, free 24-7 support, and no annual commitment. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain reg from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Plus, use the code HDN5 to get 10 bucks off any purchase of $40 or more. Some restrictions do apply. Please see the site for details. And do yourself a favor. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all the HD Nation GoDaddy deals and codes. Please support HD Nation by getting your piece of the internet at GoDaddy.com and using one of those HDN codes when you do. In these tough economic times, we all want to save a buck or two. You know what that means. It's time for our recession selection. This week's selection, bargain HDTVs and why you shouldn't fear the house brands. Now, I understand, Mr. Hare, you recently got to look at one of those classic, who is this company? Oh, they're owned by the big box mega store. It's a house brand. And it actually turned out to be an excellent television. What are we talking about? Like, what are we, house brands and bargain ATTVs, do they go together? It, it, definitely, it could be a couple different things when you talk about house brands. Normally you're talking about when I think of house brand, I'm thinking of something like Best Buy's exclusive brands that are manufactured just for them. They're only sold in-house. Namely, you'll see a brand called Insignia and Dynex. Those are made and sold only by Best Buy. Now, you can also think about some premium brands like your Sony's, your Sharp's, and even Panasonic models that are created exclusively for chain stores like, say, Costco. They have models there that you won't find in any other store. However, those models tend to be very similar to basically some of the premium brand or some of the name brands and the regular models that you would be able to find in any other store as well. So that's kind of an odd case, the Costco slash Sam's Club experience versus right. say a house brand that's exclusive just to that chain. Well, somebody the size of Walmart, they can get a big company to basically tweak something a little bit so it's exclusive to them because they want something exclusive on their shelves or maybe to bring the cost down a little bit. Now, what about, you mentioned Insignia, which is the Best Buy house totally. brand before. Was it an Insignia television you used? You yeah, I looked at a 26-inch LCD of there 
theirs, and I did a review on that. And it turned out that I was surprised. It was it was amazingly good, uh, right out of the box. Right from the factory, they did a good calibration of the color quality, and it offered the features I want in a modern looking design, and it was at a terrific price. It was actually uh, as, it, as cheap as anything could be in terms of the size I was looking at. So we got a, a great email question earlier this week. It was like, I saw a Viziomometer. It's so cheap, it must be crap. Not exactly. And Westinghouse is another one. People are like, they used to make generators. They're making monitors now. They've been making monitors for a while. Vizio basically forced the entire industry to step up their game and deliver more for less. That is exactly it. And there's also brands you'll see at stores like when I was perusing Walmart. They have their wall of televisions. And they include a lot of off brands that you might not have heard of, including like Emerson, Sylvania, Symphonic. Or at least that you haven't heard of if you're not over 40. Or That's 50. true. Also, too, the yeah. companies, as they were originally named and started, are probably no longer in that same condition. They've been bought and sold and traded. Anyway, of the brands I just mentioned, they're actually all manufactured by one company called Funai Electric of uh, Japan. And I've yet to put any of those particular TVs under the microscope, but when we go back to episode two, that $98 Magnavox Blu-ray player was actually crafted by the folks at Funai, under license, of course, from Philips Electronics North America. But considering the quality of that Blu-ray player, that would give me some encouragement about Funai's build quality for their televisions. Now, another brand that's popping up yeah. right now is Hire, H-A-I-E-R. They did recently uh, completed a sponsorship at the NBA Finals, hmm. and that gave them some decent exposure. Now, the company has a new F-series of LCDs that are smaller televisions that are available in a variety of cabinet colors. I believe the F-series comes in about five or six different colors. And I personally have been keeping an eye on the company's top selling. They have a seven-inch portable LCD, yeah. complete with a built-in uh, DTV tuner and a rechargeable battery that's for about 110 bucks online. I mean, one of the things you could compare this to is back in the 70s, Honda was this weird little brand from Japan. Now it's one of the most trusted names in the world. And, you, you know, Yugo, well, it was the cheapest car you could buy, and it's really not one of the most trusted names in the world. In some cases, you know, do your research, check with people who review this stuff, because I, just because have, you haven't heard of it. <laughs> totally. I have come across, though, some of those uh, off brands, though, that were really disappointing as well. Mm -hmm. But for everything we just talked about right now, I, I'm pretty comfortable with all of those. And the, some of the bigger, off brands like your Vizios and your Westinghouses, they're going to be they're going to be solid. I don't even know if I'd consider either one of those an off brand at this I, point. Exactly, considering in this country you know? at least, Vizio's the top selling LCD manufacturer currently going. Yeah. that just shows you how important value is nowadays with everyone. And, Absolutely, and they're delivering good quality and performance on top of it. So it's really it's really hard to point your finger. And go, uh, oh, it's not it's not the top three name brands, so, so to speak. You're in the store, you're looking at the big wall of displays, you're seeing a name you've never heard of before, you don't have an interconnection, an internet connection, and you just can't wait to get home to do some research. How do you protect yourself? If you're eyeballing it, really compare detail. Look at things like bright detail, like white shirts, cloud detail, and go from one TV to the next. Particularly if you can do it side by side, that's the easiest way to do it. Also look at the dark details as well, like shadows under the eye to just, how black is black? And usually the darker looking black levels are usually the superior television. Yeah. Also for LCDs, viewing angle. Store viewing is probably one of the best places to do this, but walk off to the side of the TV you're considering. All LCDs have relatively poor viewing angles. They change brightness and color as you shift angles, even small angles off axis. And some are definitely worse than others, so compare those. Yeah, if you've got a big wide living room with a lot of seats, it's going to stink if nobody can see what's going on because they're in the easy chair on the left side. Oh, I have a friend of mine with a wall-mounted set that off to the side, it, it really looks poor. But <laughs> like front gray. and center, it looks beautiful. So something to keep in mind. Also, some of the inexpensive brands will sacrifice features like inputs, or maybe it doesn't have an integrated channel guide, or advanced picture controls. You really need to consider your needs. And I think uh, in an upcoming episode, we'll be talking about ways of getting around some of the limitations of a TV you might already own, like say, adding a thing like an HDMI switch to the mix. Yeah. And while it's easy to do something like add more HDMI ports with an HDMI switch, if you have no ability to control your picture, like one of the early sets I played around with, it can be insanely frustrating. So beg for the remote, do some nosing around in there. Totally. Uh, for LCDs in particular, a couple things I would really want to see on just about any TV I buy nowadays is a way to control overscan. Oh. Or basically, how, how much the picture is being stretched or scaled to fit the screen itself. If you have control over that, that's usually a, a sign of a decent TV. Right. And backlight control overall. That, that's a great way to just control the overall brightness of the TV and p potentially save a lot of electricity as well if you don't have to crank it at 100%. Do not fear the bargain brands, people. They may be your, well, best deal out there. Hey, are you into movies? Are you into movies? 
I'm in the movies. I am. In He's movies. in the movies. Good. You should be watching Film Riot. It takes the mystery out of Hollywood films, how the special effects, how they do it. Each episode explores how you can replicate big budget effects and techniques, whether it's a camera, lighting, or ripping someone's arm off. This week, you can learn how to get a great green screen without spending a ton of cash, or go some of the older episodes and learn how to rip off an arm or shoot somebody in the head. Catch it every Thursday on revision3.com slash film riot. It is so much fun to watch. If you want the best looking version of HD Nation delivered to your machine at home, just go to revision3.com slash HD Nation. Click on subscribe, select RSS, and pick the feed you want. Now, if you want to catch it on iTunes, Miro, or Zoom, just click applications to find your link. That's all you have to do. Hey, you know what? You want the best looking version? 720p, 30 frames per second. It's the HD 30 FPS version. It's an MPEG-4, and it looks great, even scaled up on a 1080p TV. Plays nice on my PS3, too. Absolutely. Do us a favor. Go subscribe and watch the show. Until next time. Hey, thank you for watching. I'm Robert Herron. And I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week.